Hey guys, Sasha from Mobile Geeks here. We're in beautiful Chinatown of Oakland uh, at the Bay of San Francisco. And um, we've had a little visit to Mountain View yesterday, meeting up with some startups. And then we also saw a Best Buy over there and I just had to buy something. So even though we've been playing around with some Chromebooks in the last couple of years, um, I finally bought my very first one, and that's a Samsung Chromebook that's based on the Exynos 5250 um, dual-core ARM Cortex-A15 processor. It's the same SoC that's also in the Nexus 10. And of course, we are about to unbox this. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the 3G version anymore, so this is the Wi-Fi version that was 249, and with Texas and California, it's like 276 or something. Let's um, just open the box. And uh, we have a little welcome to your Chromebook quick start guide and then there's an even more complex quick start guide, safety pre-auctions, warranty information and that's about it. Over here we have the PSU, pretty small one. And last but not least, here comes the Chromebook. Here we go. So this is I'm not mistaken, this is already like the third generation of the of the Chromebooks. But this is of course the very first one that is based on a RISC processor. As I said, uh, Exynos 5250. It comes with 2 GB of DDR3 RAM and has a 16 GB solid state drive. Let's take a quick look around it. Um, over here we have a little slot for an SD card. Um, jack for your headset, it's a connector for the PSU, over here we have an HDMI out, a USB 2.0, USB 3.0, underneath here would be the 3G module, unfortunately this is the Wi-Fi version, and um, that's about it, right? as you can see it's sealed battery, of course, it's very thin, 17.5 millimeters and weighs only 1.1 kilograms. Okay, let's take a look at this device. Well, first of all, you notice, geez, this looks like a MacBook Air. <laughs> it's immediately booting, and, and, and that's about it, right? It boots up in like five to six seconds. Um, has a beautiful keyboard. Look at these huge shift keys on both sides. Um, the function key row might be missing for some people. Um, it just got exchanged to some very specific Chrome OS function keys. Um, the keyboard, as I said, is absolutely fantastic. For anything that costs below $300, this is an amazing keyboard. I would, I would love to see it on devices that cost over $1,000. We have a huge trackpad here with integrated mouse buttons. And what I also love about the Chromebook is you're getting a non-glossy screen. That's an 11.6 inch screen. Resolution is 1366 by 768. Unfortunately, it is not very bright. Uh, it's 200 nit uh, max, and therefore, uh, when you're outside, it's kind of hard to use. So just to give you an idea of the size of the Chromebook, um, we're going to compare it to the Acer Aspire S7, which is the Ultrabook that I'm using on a daily base right now. It's also an 11.6 inch device, but it comes with a touch screen, has a 1080p display, and of course a way faster processor. This is a Core i5 um, Ivy Bridge ULV processor. Um, you can see whether they look pretty similar in terms of their form factor, right? But if you're just stacking them up, you will also notice that the S7 is quite thinner. And in terms of the weight, they're almost the same. I think this was like 1.2 kilograms. This is 1.1. So uh, they're definitely playing in the same league, at least when it comes to the form factor, because when it comes to the price, this is over $1,000, like $1,100 with 128 gigabyte SSD, uh, while the Chromebook only costs $249. Um, you can also see a difference when we're looking at the keyboards here. Oh, just to let you know, I have an anti-glossy foil on my Acer Spire S7. So, 
after I've been typing on this one for the last three weeks and using this one for two days, I can immediately tell you that this is by far the way better keyboard on the Chromebook. So if you're into writing, if you're into blogging, if you only want to surf the internet and if you don't need to do some heavy uh, video editing or need to play the latest games, um, this might be the perfect machine for you because also when it comes to better with life, I mean, this one is running out of battery in just some three hours uh, when I'm really using it. If I want to render like two, um, two videos, 1080p, two minutes, let's say 13 Mbit, you know what, it just immediately kills the battery. Just two videos of like two minutes length. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm really a little bit torn apart right now. Well, first of all, I just, I just love this form factor. I think the S7 11.6 uh, inch is an absolutely beauty and it offers you quite some decent performance. Um, but I'm also very, very intrigued by the new Chromebook especially because um, of the keyboard and especially because of the concept because besides or except video rendering I can do whatever I need to do um, to get my job done get my work done for the block so that was a quick comparison of the Acer Aspire S7 and the Samsung Chromebook. But well, before we're taking a look at Chromium OS and I'm going to show you how to set up your system, uh, why don't we hear from our sponsors? Because if we would have gotten the 3G version of the Chromebook, we'd be subjected to several options for 3G plans, which are of course little with hidden fees, rules and unnecessary premiums. If you're after the latest hardware and 4G services, Ting has one simple plan that offers fair, honest pricing. Megabytes, minutes and text messages are each built separately. Check out Mobile Geeks ting.com and try the online savings calculator and if you're ready to get started you get $25 off most Ting devices or $25 to a Ting services. So let's take a look at Chrome OS and let me tell you a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of it. Well first of all what you're going to notice is it's going to boot up in like five six seconds and then you are here on your lock screen basically. So I could also browse as a guest as you can see over here it's already connecting to this Wi-Fi here. Uh, I could browse as a guest or I could just log in to my Google account. I have to admit that I've set it up already earlier. It just takes you like two minutes. Just log in with your Google account. It's downloading some updates. It asks for a reboot and there you go. So that's it. Um, if you were expecting some fancy animations or whatever and Windows popping up, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is how the desktop looks like. Um, you only have like three quick links here. That's the Google Chrome, that's uh, for YouTube and that's for all your apps. As soon as you're logged in with your Google account, you can access all the apps that you were using also on your other computers. So I've been pre-installing um, a bunch of games that it can also tell you a little bit about the performance of it, but we're going to talk about this some later. Um, over here, I have a little um, pop-up menu that uh, leads me to the settings and it tells me also uh, about the Wi-Fi network I'm connected to, that Bluetooth is uh, disabled, and over here I can do the volume control. And as soon as you're clicking, oops, missed that one. As soon as you're clicking on settings, it takes you to Chrome settings and most of you guys that are using a Chrome browser are kind of familiar with this. Well, it's a little bit different as you can see already here. Uh, we have the internet connections. Um, I can set um, the wallpaper uh, and you know what, it gives you quite some options. There you go, so we have urban landscape, you know all kinds of pre-installed wallpapers. No, no, actually not pre-installed, but it's downloading them from the cloud and then they're just adding it to a uh, laptop. I decided for a dark theme, I decided for a dark wallpaper because I really wanted to see how much battery life it can, can, can get out of this device. This is running on a, on a two cell battery with only 30 watt hours and Google is saying, okay, you know what, it will last like some six and a half hours. I just want to make sure that I can confirm this or maybe I can get even more out of this. Um, you can also set up the touch uh, pad speed here, um, my search engines and that's about it. Uh, that's about it. Um, I can add additional users of course if you have additional Google accounts, time zone, privacies, whatever, right? And power wash which is basically like a factory reset. 
that you can do with your device. So that's all I can tell you actually about the operating system. It is just a browser. Everything is happening in the browser. And um, if you're already using Google services like Gmail, like um, the Google Writer, like the Google Presentation Tool or whatnot, Google Calculator, um, then I think you, you're just ready to go. I mean, you log into your Google account and then you can use all um, these services immediately. But you know what, before um, this is getting too boring because once again, this is basically a Chrome browser. Why don't we take a look at the performance of it? Let's take a look at some benchmarks. Let's take a look at some games and let's uh, see how this performs. Let's talk a little bit of the performance of this Chromebook. Well, as you know, this is definitely not comparable to an x86 machine like the Aspire S7 uh, with the Core i5 that I've had earlier and compared it with. Um, this is the Exynos 5250, an ARM Cortex A15. This is a dual core processor. And I've been just running uh, some SunSpider JavaScript benchmarks and it ended up at 679 milliseconds, which is really good. If you compare this, for example, I think the iPhone 5 is roughly around um, 900 uh, milliseconds or close to a thousand milliseconds. So this is uh, quite a fast uh, SOC that we have in here. You can even go and play um, browser games like Settlers. Look at this one. So this is using Flash. And it works without any problems. Well, it's stuttering a little bit when you're scrolling, right? It's just not perfect, but it's definitely playable. Um, maybe we want to close this here, and I'm going to show you um, this World Tour Golf that I've just installed on here. Well, once and for all, this isn't a gaming device, yeah. But still, if you want to play some games in a browser, it definitely works. Let me just try this. Oops. Um, that definitely wasn't the perfect shot at all. Uh, once more, I've been opening a bunch of games in the background. This is uh, Tank Eye Online. And now it's just the only game that is running here. And I think this is definitely playable. And we're, well, we're running at 20 frames a second, now it dropped down to 16, but still, it works. And there are a bunch of games available in the Chrome Web Store. Well, it's definitely not on the same level as what you would expect um, in, the, in the Google Play Store when you're using your Nexus 10 and you're downloading the latest games from, I don't know, the Tegra Zone or whatever. Um, but this just tells you that it definitely will provide enough performance to do these simple games. And it definitely provides you enough performance when it comes to um, the main user scenario of the Samsung Chromebook, which in my opinion is just surfing the web, using the Google Web Services, and uh, basically writing. Let's, let's just check out The Verge for a second so we can see how fast it can render on this SOC. Here we go. You know what, let's go full screen. And there you saw this lag, right? It just takes a while. Let's scroll down. You can also see that the scrolling, even though yeah, when I'm using a trackpad, it's not as smooth as as you would expect from a machine that has, I don't know, an x86 with like 2 gigahertz or whatever. One of the latest generations. But it is enough. It is enough for it was meant to be for. And um, as I said, this is browsing the web and uh, writing and using the Google services, which I'm going to do in the next couple of weeks. One more. Let's head over to YouTube and let's see how it handles uh, a 1080p video file. Let's maybe go to our channel 
There we go. And let's just watch the latest video that we have here. Here's an NVIDIA Project Shield demo. Let's switch to 1080p immediately. Go full screen and let's see if that works. Well, obviously, <laughs> well, we have no sound. It's the new NVIDIA Project Shield, a fantastic new gaming console. Here we go. There's a little lag and stuttering when you're switching into full screen, but as soon as you're in there, well, 1080p is definitely smooth. But I mean, come on, you can run 1080p on an ARM Cortex uh, A8 single core processor. Um, the way you can handle it, the build quality. If so just to wrap it up, right, uh, what can you expect when you're getting this Chromebook? Um, after just the first two days of playing with this device, you know, I have to tell you, this is a very, very appealing, uh, is it, is it a netbook? Is it a laptop? Is it a Chromebook? How do you really want to define this? It's a cloud book because all the services that, I, that you are using are basically in the cloud. Um, what I like about this is it's just very thin, it is very light, and it has one of the best keyboards that is available. Um, not only in this $250 or $300 space, but you know what, in general. I would love to have this keyboard on my like $1,200 Acer Aspire S7, which is like five or six times faster at least. But I would love to use this amazing keyboard here. Um, it definitely has one disadvantage for me. I can't do video editing. I need to do video editing. And uh, on top of it, um, the screen only supports 1366 by 768 and I'm used to 1080p displays even on an 11.6 inch form factor. Plus, what I just don't like, can you see this? The color change. The screen is definitely not the best one on the market, uh, especially when it comes to the viewing angles, the horizontal viewing angles. Vertical is no problem at all, but the horizontal viewing angles are definitely not the best. Plus, it could be a lot brighter in my opinion. Let's go to full brightness. That's the full brightness. It's 200 nit and that's not enough if you want to go outside into the bright sunlight. That's not going to work out at all. Um, but performance wise I think that's that's all you need if you just want to surf the internet, if you want to do some blogging, if you want to use um, um, all the, uh, the Google Office services, cloud services that are available. And for this price, I think this is an absolutely killer. Um, the new Samsung Chromebook, that's the first impression, unboxing, comparison, some, well, call it benchmarks, what I did with these games and with YouTube and whatnot and surfing. And um, yeah, I'm, I think this is a really cool platform, definitely. Uh, the question is, if it just gives you enough options to do all your work. And that's up to you. If this fits your user scenario, I think for $250 or $249 for the Wi-Fi version and the 3G version is $329, this is just the best deal that is available right now. I'm Sasha from Mobile Geeks. Thanks for watching.